Where's Riddell? Oh, okay. All right. The time has come for the Monday, November 23rd, 2020, virtual special council meeting, committee of the whole public hearing, proposed Fountain Square TIF. Roll call, please. Oh, we don't need a roll call, do we? Yeah, like we do. Yeah. Oh, we do. Roll call, please. Alderman Mosio. Here. Alderman Kirkwood. Here. Alderman Newsom. Present. Alderman Turner. Here. Alderman Rivera. Present. Alderman Florian. Present. Alderman Taylor. Present. Alderman Bolton. Present. Alderman Seeger. You got to tell me. Just hit the space bar and hold it down, Pat. There you go. Present. Thank you. Mayor Cunningham. Present. Uh, we have a quorum. Uh, items 1B, public hearing purpose and procedures. Bob, are you going to explain or do you want to just read directly what's in front of me? I just explain, Mayor. It'll be okay. a if I do that. So the purpose of tonight's meeting is to give the public an opportunity to see a little bit about the TIF. We're going to have a presentation from the TIF consultants, and then they'll have an opportunity to weigh in on whatever their opinion is about whether or not a TIF should be established in this particular location on this particular set of facts. And then the meeting will, um, and then we'll close the hearing once we're through with all the public comment. Now, before we get too far into it, um, some of you have uh, received an email late this afternoon indicating that there were objections uh, at one stage of the proceedings. Those have been resolved. We'll be hearing more about that during the course of these proceedings as well. So with that, I'll turn this over to the, to the TIF consultant, I think, comes next, Mayor. Yes. Uh, Committee of the Whole presentation, item two. Uh, proposed Fountain Square TIF increment fin financing dish pr uh, presentation. And I think Mr. McKenna is on the line. Or, uh, will, Noel, would you take it from here and then present? Hi, this is Phil McKenna. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Uh, with me are Bob Richlicky and Nina Coppola, who assisted in this uh, presentation, this work. We're pleased to present. We go to the first slide. Uh, this is just a map of the proposed TIF district. First one after this, I'm sorry. Which is basically the Fountain Square area minus the Walmart and minus the uh, residential and industrial warehousing that's nearby. Can we show the next screen? We got that map there, no? Okay, go on without the slides, I guess. Uh, we're gonna talk some about what tax increment financing is, uh, how it might be used, how it's implemented, what it would mean for the city of Waukegan in terms of the proposed Fountain Square redevelopment project and redevelopment plan, the qualifying factors and key elements of the proposed plan. Um, this is obviously not the city's first tax increment finance district, but I'd like to give an overview of what tax increment financing is all about. Um, TIF has been probably the most widely used governmental form of economic development center for the past 20, 25 years. Uh, it's active in 49 states. In Illinois, there's over a thousand TIF districts. There's a billion dollars in tax revenue with respect to those deployment in those districts. Lake County municipalities with TIFs include Mundelein, North Chicago, Vernon Hills, Lake Zurich, Antioch, and Zion, and many, many more. Uh, Waukegan has designated 10 TIF districts over the past 20 years and terminated five of those. Just to emphasize that TIFs don't necessarily last forever. Uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about what tax increment financing is for those who are not familiar with it. It's basically a, 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 an idea to separate tax revenue into two different pots. The original base property taxes as they are today are shared with all the taxing districts on the same pro rata basis as the county dictates now. When improvements take place, the equalized assessed valuation property values go up. 
those increases in property values that presumably are the result of the TIF incentive and policies result in a second batch of revenue. That revenue is the TIF, that's the tax increment finance. The difference between the current valuation and taxes and the future valuation of the taxes over a period not to exceed 23 years. At the end of that time, then all of the tax revenue that's been generated goes to all of the taxing districts on the proportional basis. There's an important but for consideration tax income financing. Basically, it's saying that the municipality finds that in order to attract investment to the area, it needs to be able to make certain public improvements and provide certain incentives. The basic public improvements here include roadway improvements throughout the Fountain Square area, improvements to 94, uh, and other improvements within the area to help traffic circulation. Although the casino is included, it's included for, solely for purposes of taking advantage of increased equalized cess valuation. Casino will receive no benefits from this whatsoever. That's what the plan is, and that's certainly what the council would maintain. Um, Tax increment financing basically can be divided into a pay-as-you-go or an upfront basis. What the city's used to, and I think looking for in this particular uh, TIF idea, is to have a pay-as-you-go, where development entities only receive increment to the extent that it's actually generated. So there's no risk to the city with respect to that. We got our slides back. Can we go to the next one. Um, next slide. If we can get there. Um, okay, this is the, how the TIF is divided, the pay-as-you-go, which is the way that the city is used to operating and certainly the way that would be recommended here. Our TIF revenues are produced only by improvements that take place to the extent that they don't take place, there's no risk for the city. To the extent that they do take place, then there's a sharing in that TIF revenue. If we go to the next slide. What can TIF finance? Um, you see the arrows on the side there. Eligible costs are basically public improvements, things on the horizontal line, not vertical. Building improvements, new buildings in and of themselves do not get uh, counted in the TIF increment. The main purposes, all these costs are eligible as cited up here. Main purposes we're looking at in this TIF district are rehabilitation or reconstruction of existing businesses. They can be helped out. Public improvements is the single largest element in this TIF district. And we notice we have school and library payments. And the next slide will show us the use of those school and library payments. The statute requires that to the extent that residential is the result of redevelopment agreements entered into by the city, then there has to be a set aside to basically make whole the schools who have lost tuition income on the basis of the uh, TIF district, but a formula that takes into account any new students that are generated so they're held harmless throughout that process. Again, we don't anticipate that there's any residential that's gonna be a part of this TIF district, but if indeed there is residential, there is a basic hold harmless for the school districts. We go to the next slide. Uh, when is TIF used? TIF is really an adjunct to the community plans and, and goals. You have your first layer of your basic comprehensive plan, which includes the amendment of 2020. You have your sub area goals that have been the result of several studies done in the Fountain Square area. And your TIF goals fit on top of that. They say within this particular sub area, these are the goals that we hope to reach. We go to the next slide. Um, TIF is used either project oriented basis or area oriented basis. Project really means that there's one single project that's getting the benefits of the TIF. This one is an area oriented TIF. It, the boundaries reflect redevelopment on multiple sites within the area. And the public improvements that are needed, particularly those transportation related ones, are ones that would benefit the entire area. We go on to the next one. There are obviously a number of policy questions that the council's considering and will continue to consider. When a specific redevelopment uh, will occur? Is it but for the TIF? What will the effect of the TIF be on other taxing districts? And we've had a joint review board meeting and input from the taxing districts with respect to that. What types of projects would be funded and what types of projects wouldn't be funded in this case? What other resources are available and will incremental taxes be sufficient to make development projects feasible? In our estimation, they will be. We go to the next one. Now. One of the things that's really important in this whole process is transparency. We listed down the key milestones in the TIF designation process. 
and included in this, we'll have specifics on this, but our taxing district notice, notice to any interested parties with respect to a uh, newspaper publication and a interested parties registry established by the city, notice to all taxpayers and also all residents within 750 feet. There may be some residents who are in this meeting tonight on the basis that they received a notice because they're within 750 feet of the boundaries of this proposed TIF district. If there are, I can assure you that there's no particular impacts on you whatsoever. Uh, this is not an effort from the city to do any residential improvements. It's an effort to improve infrastructure within the area. So you can see we hold the joint review board. That's already been held. We'll talk about that some more. Uh, this is the public hearing tonight, and after consideration, if the city council wants to go forward, it would require the adoption of three ordinances. We'll go on to the next one. These are the, um, let me skip one there. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, no, my fault. Uh, uh, timing is a significant element in, with respect to the TIF district. So we had the draft eligibility report and redevelopment plan on file with the city clerk more than 10 days prior to the kickoff adoption of the ordinance back in October. We had notice of public hearing 45 days prior to the public hearing to the joint review board members and all the taxing districts. Uh, we have TIF ordinances introduced not, not less than 14 or more than 90 days after today's public hearing. A typical designation process takes four to six months. So there's plenty of room for input in this process. After, if the TIF is designated, term is 23 years. It can be extended or terminated early by actions of the council. Joint review board will continue to meet annually. Okay, this is what we wanted to show in terms of the public notice requirements. We initially had that notice of interested parties and that basically says anybody who wants to can receive all of the public information will be sent that sub, uh, separately if they sign up for the interested parties registry. Draft plan and eligibility report were on file with the clerk. I said October, it was actually September. The notice of the public hearing was mailed on October 7th. Notice of the interested parties registry and public hearing was on October 13th. And notices for the public hearing were published in the uh, Sun in the, the local newspaper on the 3rd and the 4th of November. A notice of the public hearing was mailed to taxpayers within the proposed TIP district and those within 750 feet. So it's been an open process. We just want to quickly cover the uh, qualification factors. The act states that for improved land, which this is, you need at least five eligibility factors. We found six factors, lack of community planning, inadequate utilities, military layout, deterioration, code violations, and excessive vacancies. One real important note is that this is for the area as a whole. So it's not an adjudication on any particular property. It's when you take the area as a whole, do these, do these eligibility factors hold when? We go to the next one. Um, cities, <clears throat> cities Comprehensive Plan 2020 update recognized the need for a strategy to revitalize this area. So we relied very heavily upon that as well as staff support. Uh, we saw that that had a, a method for stimulating, enhancing new commercial, retail, and mixed use growth. The city will help preserve and strengthen the Fountain Square area. And therefore, one of the things that we put in there was that if existing businesses can use some addition, additional help with respect to rehab or of their facilities, that money can potentially be provided through TIF as well. We'll go to the next one. Um, TIF compliance, the proposed redevelopment project area. Oh, I got, sorry, I'll go along with it. Um, these are the project and plan objectives. And again, relying very heavily on the 2020 uh, comprehensive plan amendments. Wanna assist in coordinating the redevelopment activities, reduce or eliminate negative factors. And the negative factors are principally related to public improvements and principally related to the road traffic. Wanna accomplish the redevelopment goals over a, a reasonable period of time, provide for high quality public improvement, transit, uh, because we also looked at including potential train station in the future and projects within and with outside of the uh, RPAs, the TIF district. We wanted to provide an attractive overall appearance of the area. We go to the next one. 
Uh, these are just the measures for the TIF compliance. TIF plan does conform to the city's comprehensive plan as amended. It does, we are proposing that the TIF district uh, be enacted, which is consisting of contiguous parcels, and it's over one and a half acres. The proposed TIF district meets the criteria for a blighted area set forth under the act. And we believe the but for requirement is met that redevelopment is feasible only with the utilization of tax and financing. So we go on to the next one. Um, so this is a blighted area. There's six factors. We only need five to designate a blighted area. And again, it's within the context of what that means in the act. And it means that factors are reasonably distributed throughout the entire area, not that individual parcels have been adjudicated. We go on, we'll take a quick look at the uh, factors. Uh, these are the 13 factors and the six we found are highlighted. Go on to the next one. Uh, we found deteriorated conditions, uh, both in the buildings and of surface improvements consistent with the findings that, that are called for in the TIF Act. The deteriorated conditions in the study area included exterior masonry, stucco, or other building surfaces that were needed in repair of, or painting, uh, significant site improvements that were needed in the parking lots, driveways, and side lots. We go on to the next one. We found inadequate utilities on the basis that many of the utilities and streets in this particular study area were built in 1970 or 71, over 33 years old, pursuant to the plan of the subdivision for the Lakehurst Mall. Uh, we talked with city engineers, the existing stormwater management in particular did not seem to have the appropriate capacity to accommodate the future development that's desired and called for in the comprehensive plan. Um, the, we would note that the casino obviously brings more traffic into the area. I want to emphasize the casino does not receive any direct benefit from a TIF district whatsoever. It's just a, a magnet in terms of attracting other kinds of development in the area. We go on to the next one. Uh, deleterious layout. At the, in particular, we found that the southwest portion of the proposed TIF district, commercial and retail uses were on three sides, multifamily buildings, uh, multi-building complexes. Most of the properties that are abutting the apartment complex are either vacant or underutilized. The current land uses of the proposed TIF were developed in a piecemeal fashion over a period of time, relating much more to a retail mall uh, that doesn't work anymore and that need to be rearranged. If we go to the next one, it's going to hit the highlights here. Uh, lack of community planning, we found particularly in the essence that the comprehensive plan adopted in 1970, 1987 and an amendment in 2020, 10 of the 39 parcels or 25% were developed prior to the adoption of the 87 comprehensive plan. And of course, 100% were developed prior to the adoption of the 2020 update. Uh, Fountain Square TIF District is located a former Lakehurst Mall site it's kind of interesting because what we're seeing with malls throughout the Chicago area is they need to be reconfigured. The old mall isn't working at all. Obviously, you don't have the old mall here, but you have a lot of streets and infrastructure that suggest that this was where the old mall was and need to be reconfigured for modern day development. Uh, if we go on to the next one. Uh, we found some code violations, particularly in relationship to the inability of the area to meet 2020, 2012 International Building Code and amendments to that code in 2016. 25 of the 39 structures within the TIF were built before the new code was even adopted. Many aspects of these buildings may not meet all the requirements of the current city of Waukegan Code. The former child wear store is not up to code. The Lakehurst Banquets has undergone numerous remodeling efforts over the years, and we don't think it meets current building code. We go to the next one. Excessive vacancies was another factor. About 17% of the 30 retail and service buildings are either vacant or partially vacant. Uh, the normal vacancy rate for an area like this would be five to 10%, so it's higher than normal. As we talked about before, the child ward store has been uh, vacant for a long period of time, and two former banking facilities have been vacant for approximately two years. We go on to the next one. Um, some of the key elements of the Fountain Square TIF plan are that it provides for commercial retail entertainment and mixed use. Um, doesn't provide for any residential use here. TIF budget is $180 million in 2020 dollars. 
the budget has to reflect a 23 year period of time and that's in a large part why it's so high. The other reason is because of the extensive roadway improvements that are required there. The base equalized test valuation, in other words, what it is today on the county's records is 22.7 million. And we're projecting that upon completion of all the redevelopment activities, the estimate will go to 90 to $100 million. That's all obviously uh, predicted on the basis of a number of assumptions, uh, including absorption schedule, market factors, but that's our best estimate of what it would be 23 years from now. We'll go to the next one. This is the TIF budget, um, the $180 million. As you can see, half of that is for public facilities and improvements. And that's mainly with respect to the roadway improvements. So that's 90 out of 180 million. Uh, infrastructure for other improvements as, long, as well as roadway is 26 million <clears throat> and a $15 million provision for rehabilitation of existing structures. If there are small businesses there that need their structures to be rehabbed in some manner or fashion. If we go on to the next one. Um, the TIF budget guidelines are important to note. Uh, it's an overall budget, covers 23 years. Line items are somewhat flexible. So for example, if site improvement costs were exceeded $12 million, effectively the city could borrow from another line item and pledge that. The, the budget expenditures are all subject to city approvals. I wanna emphasize that everything in this plan is still subject to council approvals. Someone wants to come in and build a certain type of facility in the area and it needs to go through planning and zoning. If it needs to go through any committees of the council, that happens. There's no exception for any TIF property. All of the items within the budget need to be approved by the city council on an annual basis, basically the same way that expenditures are approved now. We go to the, I think the last slide. So we're at the step where we're at a public hearing, uh, obviously after hearing testimony and any other written comments, city council will consider that. And you can consider an ordinance adopting the TIF within 14, not more than 90 days afterward. If the TIF ordinances are approved, they're subsequently filed with the county clerk. Um, it's important again to note that the city council has full control over any development that occurs over the years here. And I, I do at this juncture also want to compliment Noel and Russ and Tina and Bob Long who have really been helpful in putting all this together. So I think that's the end of the presentation, Mayor. You're muted, Mayor. I guess we can move now. At this time, we, first of all, thank you uh, for that presentation. And <laughs> there might be questions uh, from maybe uh, the, the alderman. But at this time, we're going to move to public comment. Uh, there'll be two phases. There'll be one by phone, one by phone, and written and reading of written comments received in advance. So at this time, I'll go to public comment. Uh, Madam Clerk, are there any written comments that were received in advance? Yes, we do have a one written comment. Uh, I'm going to though give you the phone number for you to call in if you'd like to do a verbal comment. And once uh, I give you that phone number, we'll have Mr. Motley read the, the written comment. So the phone number for participating today is 847 eight five six six four one two that number is eight four seven eight five six six four one two go ahead and call that number and we will put you in a queue at this time david motley will read the one message that we received this is from Lori casey dear mayor cunningham and members of the waukegan city council on behalf of our three taxing bodies, we would like to thank you for and your team for working diligently with us to come to an agreeable resolution for the Fountain Square TIF. We'd like to formally withdraw our objection that was sent at the Joint Review Board. With the proposed agreement, we fully support the proposed TIF and look forward to continuing to work together for the betterment of all we represent. We look forward to completing this together with the formal documents discussed, as well as the vote 
at the November 23rd City Council meeting. With gratitude, Mrs. Suzanne Simpson, Warren Township Supervisor, Dr. John Algrim, Superintendent Warren High School number 121, and Dr. Lori Casey, Superintendent Woodland School District number 50. Thank you, Mr. Motley. Okay, uh, there is a leg, so bear with me, and uh, that takes about 60 seconds. So again, I'm going to tell you the phone number, 847-856-6412. 847-856-6412, and I am waiting for people to call in, so bear with me, thank you. Mayor, while we're, while we're waiting, may I jump in for just a moment? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, Dr. Casey's letter did mention a vote tonight, and I did clarify for her that there is no action by the city council tonight. This is just a committee of the whole public hearing, and she and the team from Warren and Woodland and Warren Township High School understand that the first time that action can be taken by council is 14 days from tonight for those ordinances. Thank you. You're welcome. We are waiting for those calls to come in. Please bear with us. Thank you for calling in. Please state your name for the public record and let me know when you're done. Go right ahead. You need to unmute. Go right ahead, please. That's the Can you hear me? Yes, please go right ahead. Oh, okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Viraj Patel, uh, 1150 South Waukegan Road at Tires Plus and 1146 South Waukegan at UPS Store. I just had a brief two questions about the tip district proposal, yeah. if I may. Right okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Hi, what? My name is Viraj Patel, uh, 1150 South Waukegan Road at Tires Plus. 140 plus, South Waukegan at UPS store. I just had a brief question about the tip district proposal, if I may. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Sorry about that. Mr. Patel, you may want to mute yes. your computer or your television, but please go ahead. Okay, the question is, what about the, uh, what is the, the benefit of a TIP district for the existing businesses currently in that proposal TIP district? I'll take a shot at answering that first and then the will welcome picture. I know your store. I'm a, I'm a Waukegan resident and I use your store as well. So I, 
you run a nice shop. Uh, <clears throat> existing businesses basically are not affected unless they want to do some improvements. For example, if you wanted to do rehabilitation of your store there or do some signage or outdoor improvements, then TIF money could be used to help you do that. You have to come to the city, fill out an appropriate application, but TIF money could be used for that in the future. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Patel. All right, let me wait a few more minutes to see if there's any other response. Well, seeing that there's no more waiting to talk, I think we're done with the public time. Thank you so much for participating. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Martin, and thank you for those. Thank you, Madam Chair. 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 Thank you, Madam and to, Ms., uh, and to our partners and other taxing bodies, we do appreciate your commitment along with your um, encouragement of this project. And it was an amazing working with you and your the various teams uh, so we can all come to a mutual agreement of moving our prospective communities forward. Um, with that being said, uh, item four is adjournment, uh, but uh, I don't know, Bob, it, it, I don't know that Alderman have any questions to ask Mr. McKenna. We have a couple of questions here. Um, uh, we can also do this offline as necessary if it needs to, if you have additional information. Uh, we had the first hand to come up was Alderman Taylor, then Alderman Florian, Alderman Taylor. Go ahead, ma'am. Um, does Lake, is Lakehurst, um, banquets included in this, like it, it goes, it wraps all the way around this TIF district. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. And the banquet hall is included. Okay. And they're, they still have those three properties out in front, if I'm correct, right? That they sold at one point or were thinking of selling. That's a um, Noel, that's to be a Noel question. I don't mean to yeah. cut you off, Alderman. Noel, won't you answer that, please? That's correct. Okay. I believe so, that they still own those and those are also within the boundaries of Okay, good. All right, Alderman Florian. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, Mr. McKenna, um, I had a couple questions about some of the things you talked about during the presentation. Um, could you expound a little bit more on what you consider blighted? I, I'm, to me, I mean, I'm a lifetime Waukegan resident and some of the properties out in the Fountain Square area are some of our newest Play, you know, like culvers and some of the, so when you say blighted, I'm a little confused about that. Uh, good question. Blighted is a term of art pursuant to the TIF Act. And so we're just using that definition that the TIF Act authors gave it. And obviously, you know, paying attention to any case law that survived. So not every property does qualify. We, we don't need to make that finding. It's that the preponderance of criteria are found throughout the area. So there are any number of buildings that wouldn't specifically meet it. But what we would look for is what's the general character of the area. And particularly here where the main improvements that we're looking to finance are improvements to roadway systems and infrastructure. Those are things that are underground or next to or around because we're also talking about potential improvements to 94. So we're talking about improvements that are offsite but would benefit, but for whom the users within the TIF district would benefit because of improvements there. Okay, um, thank you for that. And then you also said in, as you were speaking that the casino is a magnet for other development. So how do we meet the but for clause if we have something that's gonna attract all this other business? How, how do we qualify to get a TIF when 
we've got something that's supposed to be bringing in all this business. I think I apologize. I think I used the wrong word in terms of magnet. I don't view a casino to be a magnet. I shouldn't have put it that way. I think the fact that the casino is there and that people see it and they drive around the area makes the area at least become highlighted to real estate brokers and agents to say, hey, what about this area? Is this an area we might invest in? To the extent that restaurants are looking and trying to make a decision as to you know, this corner or some corner nearby that's not in, I think they might be more inclined to make it in this area forever. But I don't think it's, I, I shouldn't have used the term magnet. I think it highlights activity in the area and to the extent that anything highlights activity in the area, I think that's helpful in terms of future youth. Okay, and then one last question. Um, when you were talking about the dollars, you said that we're gonna make a total investment of $180 million, right? Over the 23 years, yes. Right, and that you hope to get a $100 million value out of that. That doesn't seem like a very good return on our money. <laughs> I think we're getting more than that. Let me just look at the, at the specifics on that. And while he's doing that, I will say, Alderman, if you take a look at what Bridge Development has done, and I'm pretty sure Alderman Taylor can attest to this and the rest of us, uh, when we're talking about attractions, what Bridge Development have done, being in Crane Business as one of the major developments on the, on the North Shore, particularly in the state of Illinois, I think that's what Mr. McKenna was really talking about, about bringing attraction into it. Just, I didn't know if you knew that, but I'll get you that article so you can have it, ma'am. Go ahead, Mr. McKenna. Yeah, the, what we refer to as the projected equalized assessed valuation is up to 100 million. Recall that equalized assessed valuation is roughly one third of the value. So that 100 would really be a $300, $300 million okay. market value. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Well, thank you everybody. It, as always, it, I don't see any more hands up. Uh, Mr. McK I'm sorry, Alderman Keith Turner. Hey. Thank you, Mayor, and uh, thank you, Mr. McKenna's excellent presentation. Just a couple of questions for, for clarification. Uh, early, and I apologize, I was distracted. Uh, my wife was in an accident, thank God she's okay. Uh, but uh, I uh, just want clarification on a statement made about the vertical structures being eligible for TIF funding. And then further later in the discussion, you, you talked about improvements to private, what I thought you said was improvements being allowed for uh, private businesses and uh, parking lots and such. Could you kind of clarify that for me? Sure, just to clarify the, <clears throat> uh, basically horizontal improvements are the things that you finance with TIF. Vertical improvements in terms of new construction, new buildings cannot, are not eligible for TIF dollars. Okay. To the extent that there's infrastructure improvements underneath that building, the infrastructure improvements would be eligible. Okay. The extent there's an exist, existing businesses there, who want to do some sort of rehabilitation, reconfiguration of their business, that's an eligible cost as well. Okay. Um, and also um, in your presentation slide, there is a, I think $3 million allotted for uh, job training. And how would that, how would you envision that that might be distributed? Um, to the extent that there's an existing job training program, particularly with College of Lake County or with the uh, community high school district, if they have an existing program, let's just, I'll just pull something out of thin air. Let's say it was to train future chefs and they wanted to expand that program on the basis of more restaurants moving into the TIF district. That would be an eligible cost to pay to College Lake County or the high school district an amount of money sufficient to cover their increased costs for that training program. Great, thank you very much. Uh, excellent presentation. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman Taylor. This will be my last question, I promise. So did we have this area as a TIF district when we were supposed to get the casino the first time? Is that, I, I can't remember now if that was a TIF district at that time or it maybe. Was a, it was a TIF district previously. Um, we did, that was TIF district number five, which we closed when we opened the bridge TIF district. Okay, was that done as part of the casino um, when we were going for it the last time? I don't believe that it was specifically related to the casino. 
it obviously included our, our property, but I don't think it was created specifically re related to the casino. I wasn't part of the team at that point though, so I can't say that with absolute certainty. Okay, and how long ago was that? Was that like, I can't remember now, it's been so long. Yes, 203. let me look it up for you. I think it's 204, 204 Alderman. Okay. 203, 204 up in there, yeah. I think, I yes. I think it was 04 and canceled in 13 or 14, but I can yeah. look up exact dates. Okay. So, um, I mean, I can't even imagine, but what would happen if we didn't get the casino this time? Would we still want this TIF district? Yes. Yes. I believe okay. so, yes. We absolutely okay. still want those improvements. There are larger, they're not specific, specifically related to the casino. There are larger benefits to that area as a whole. Um, okay. Those infrastructure improvements will be um, game changing for us, in my opinion. That's what I wanted to hear. Yeah. Okay, that's it for me. All right. All right. With that being said, and Alderman Mayor. Pierfrey, who said mayor? Okay, I'm sorry, Alderman Bolton. Yeah, real quick question. I understand that this needs to be, a uh, decision needs to be made by December. Mm -hmm. Am I understanding? That's correct. Yeah, it will be, we will put this on the agenda for the first week in December. First council meeting in December, which will be December 7th. Thank you. All right. With that being said, Alderman, if you have any further follow-up questions, feel free to reach out to Noel. Then Noel can get you over to, uh, to Mr. McKenna for those questions. In that order, um, uh, call him directly. It, it'll be easy because Noel probably can answer a lot of those questions that they're financial. Obviously, Tina and Noel will certainly be, uh, are available to answer any of those financial, legal, planning, zoning type deals. Um, again, I want to thank everybody for being here, try to get you out of here uh, as early. To the public, we certainly want to thank you for your participation in this evening's uh, Community of the Whole as it relates to uh, what I think uh, will be another great project for our community. Um, with that being said, uh, if there's anything, nothing else further, no other comments. There's a motion by all the- Can we uh, first have a motion to close the public hearing, Mayor? Okay, all right. Motion yeah. by Alderman Newsom, second by Alderman Mozio to close the public hearing. Uh, roll call, please. Alderman Mozio. Aye. Alderman Kirkwood. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Turner. Aye. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Motion pass. And keeping this on the southwest and south side of town, motion by Alderman Taylor, second by Alderman Seeger to adjourn. Uh, any questions? Roll call, please. Alderman Mosio. Aye. Alderman Kirkwood. Aye. Alderman Newsom. Aye. Alderman Turner. Aye. Alderman Rivera. Aye. Alderman Florian. Aye. Alderman Taylor. Aye. Alderman Bolton. Aye. Alderman Seeger. Aye. Motion pass. Most is passing carry. To all of Mr. Mr. McKenna, thank you again. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. Thank you. To the legislative body, which is called the Alderman, thank you and happy Thanksgiving to all of you and your families. And I will see everyone in a couple of weeks. Take care. God bless. Happy, happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving everyone. everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.